Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Kyle and this is Kaizen DIY Gym. In this video, I'll show you how to make a simple but fully upgradable lever style belt squat. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw my recent post showing this thing off. I'll admit that when I first decided to build a lever belt squat, I was pretty skeptical about how it would work. This thing actually surprised me. If you love the idea of this style of belt squat, but you don't have the time, tools, or materials to build it, check out my affiliates in the description below. There are plenty of really great purchasable options out there. The materials and tools list is in the description of this video. By purchasing from those links, you're helping to fund future DIY projects. Safety first. This project is pretty chill, but if you're not careful, you can still get hurt. Make sure to follow all the safety precautions and don't blame me if you hurt yourself. DIY projects are awesome, but being safe is even more awesome. I start off with some two by fours. I cut two 30 inch pieces and two 20 inch pieces. I mark the center at about two inches from the end of the 30 inch pieces. I drill a one inch hole here for my one inch hitch pin. If your rack has five eighths inch holes, that's what you'll drill here. To make sure all of the pieces are secure when assembled, I'll be using bolts. Before I do that, I use screws to hold everything in place. I pre-drill the holes for the bolts. I'm using quarter inch bolts to hold these pieces together. I'd recommend using washers too. I didn't on these because I forgot to get them at the hardware store. It's easy enough to add them later. The 20 inch two x fours go on the outside with a little bit of overlap. Mine overlap by nine inches, but you can do more or less. Just make sure you leave enough room for the bolts. In terms of this type of belt squat, there's a curve to the movement pattern. The shorter the total length, the more you feel the curve at the bottom of the movement. The longer the total length, the less you feel the curve. The total length of mine is 41 inches. Okay, back to the build. I pre-drill holes for my 3 8 inch bolts. Yes, I am using bigger bolts here to give this connection point extra strength. I add one final quarter inch bolt to the very front to keep these 2x4s from separating. I'll be using a 5 8 inch eye bolt for my belt connection point. It's probably overkill, but at least I know it'll hold. I use a 5 8 inch auger bit to drill the hole for it. The simple version of this belt squat is top loaded. I use a 45 pound plate to mark where I'll put my weight pin. The cheapest way to do this is a dowel and a recessed hole. If you don't have a Forstner bit, using plumbing pipe is a super easy alternative. The plumbing pipe is just there to keep the weights in place, so you can use screws to attach. And that's it for the build. You can use a hitch pin to easily attach and detach it from your rack. Something to take into consideration with this type of belt squat is that you're only lifting a portion of the weight you put on it. Why? Because of math and physics? Not really my area of expertise. I mean, I get it, I just don't know how to explain it. Just keep this in mind when you're using it. If you're really curious about how much weight you're lifting, you can use a luggage scale to test it out. Having the weight closer or farther from the rack will make a difference. There are also weight variations in the movement itself. This is known as the resistance curve. But anyway, if you like doing belt squats with this thing, but wanna make it easier to get in and out of, you can prop it up with a two x four or add a couple of screws and springs to that two x four and turn it into a retractable kickstand. Measure the length you'll need and cut the two x four. I use a two inch door hinge to attach the two x four to the belt squat. I've got two eight inch springs that I attach with lag bolts. The more tension they're in when you attach them, the more forcefully they'll move the kickstand. In my opinion, this is a must have. The next optional upgrade is a handle. Some people really like the added stability of a handle, some don't. If you wanna try it, here's what you need. A floor flange, a 12 inch pipe nipple, a 45 degree elbow, a six inch pipe nipple, a T connector, two more six inch pipe nipples, and two caps. I used one inch pipe for everything, but three quarter inch pipe would also work. I'm not planning on pulling on this handle, so I think lag bolts will be strong enough to keep it in place, but you could always run bolts all the way through if you need extra strength. Screw everything together in just a few minutes and you're ready to roll. 
Personally, I love the added stability from the handle. It allows me to go real deep on my belt squats. The next upgrade took a couple of tries to get right, but it was totally worth it. What is it? A seated calf raise! Add a flange to the front where the eye bolt is. Unscrew the center pipe and screw it into the front flange. Unscrew the top of the handle and screw that into the center flange. Unscrew the bottom part of the handle and set that aside. I add some insulation pads for the legs and... When I first take it for a spin, I realize my kickstand is way too long. After a quick trim with my circular saw, I try it again. Without weights, it feels decent. I add some weights and realize there's not enough padding for the knees and there's nowhere to put my hands. After taking a few days to think about it, I figured out what it needs. For one, it needs an actual seat. The chest up pad is great, but I have a better idea. Next, I remove the pipe from the middle flange and add a two inch nipple. I attach a one inch to three quarter inch connector and screw in a six inch long three quarter inch pipe into that. Why reduce the size? I'll show you in a minute. Screw in a T connector on top and 10 inch pipes into each side. Add the pads to those pipes. These pads will not fit the one inch pipes. A 45 degree elbow on the ends of those, six inch pipes into those elbows and then caps on the ends. Once everything is in place, you can use Loctite to set everything permanently. Last thing I need to do is the seat. I already have this small upholster pad from an old project. I attach a flange to the bottom of it and screw in a two inch nipple. Now this thing can just screw into place. I test it out without weights and it feels good. I test it out with weights and it's perfect. Boom, seated calf raises in my home gym, very small footprint, what's up? I know I'll get some questions about my design choices on this one. One of my primary goals was to be able to switch back and forth without too much work. As it's currently designed, it takes about three minutes to go from seated calf raise back to belt squat. Not too bad. So that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments section. You gonna build one? If so, which version are you going with? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.